the topic for my, for my presentation is textual context guided vision transformer with rotated multi head attention for sentiment analysis so uh, when we are talking about sentiment analysis this is a very sensitive topic uh, for analyzing the content whether it is the textual form or the visual form so when we go for the independent entities to analyze for sentiment analysis what the problem arises that we have the different set of sentiments generated through our images and different set of expressions generated uh, through your text forms so if you see certain examples seen here so if i simply rely on the image samples like one does not simply walk after leg day so it may give you a neutral expression, but when you go with the caption provided along with this, the tweet given along with this content is how I sleep today, leg day, hashtag jelly, hashtag aching and hashtag gym. So aching here specifies that there is a pain involved when you are posting this image. So somewhere you are, uh, you know, you are feeling that negative emotion, negative sentiment right so how to go for an efficient sentiment analysis in those cases when you have multiple ways of expression so in this particular uh, work we have tried to use both the modalities together to efficiently identify the true sentiment that can be that is actually expressed by the user here because our tweets may have the positive, negative, and sometimes neutral as well. So if you see the second example here, Mike will not accept this plastic rose. So if you go with this particular caption provided for the second image, what we can see here is that there is some kind of rejection. And it's a negative sentiment. Whereas when you go with the image where a lady offering an, a flower to a man, show some kind of positive sentiments involved in that image so they are just going far apart pull apart so in that case what we are expecting if we start analyzing them independently it is always a different results we are going to get so what is the challenge lying here is what is the problem here is how you can make an efficient image to text interaction efficient way of understanding the textual data and image uh, images provided to you to understand the true sentiments involved, right? So in that direction, the challenge always stays with us in, on the broader periphery is the curse of dimensionality. Since you have two different types of uh, modalities you are available with, you need to process them separately. So dimension is always a big issue. So whenever we develop the models, it is always required that you prefer to develop some, you know, the models that you can practically deploy or practically you can run the hardware requirements becomes a big you know constraint when you bring them into the real time application so the dimensionality needs to be handled when you are uh, you know uh, designing the model so that part needs to be taken care of another challenge is like feature heterogeneity so it involves like when you are combining different features different feature distributions you ensure that that combination does not lead to the losing important information or any kind of noisy element or some wrong information may not be highlighted when you are fusing them. So in that direction, we have multiple methods that have gone for like late fusion, early fusion, and they do also demand dedicated independent learning of each modality. So they make the model even more extensive and computationally demanding. So what we have observed that to address all these issues, instead of relying you know, on multiple independent learning of both the architect, uh, both the modalities, we utilized a single solution where we'll be using only context-guided vision transformer. So we will not be using a separate entity that will be handling your images and the text and then we'll be fusing it but we have the combined learning made through context guided vision vision transformer uh, 
which will be finally making our predictions about positive, neutral, and negative sentiments. So, in that direction, if we we'll have a close look at the, you know, working, how is it going to take place? Is at the second level, what we are doing now, when we have to feed the text part, we are not directly feeding uh, the straight away embeddings like word to vector is available with us, TF, IDF uh, embeddings are available with us, but we fuse them with some fundamental understanding uh, of the textual data, the, like what is the part of speech that are present, which part of the speech to be highlighted will be utilized, uh, you know, to map it with the visual data. Then we also using the language model embeddings. So here we are ensuring that the model weights are not going to be heavy as we are using the small version of language model version two, which is a pre-trained model to get the embeddings for your textual description. When we combine all three embeddings together, we represent it with mixed text embeddings. Now, then after we ensure that how you can provide a discrimination, a dis distinct representation of each word that is present in the text. Uh, we took a reference of a work for this part. And now here we came up with adaptively rotated refined embeddings generation. So what we are doing, we, for each embeddings, since they provide an independent uh, representation or independent uh, information about the text, we rotate them by a certain angle, theta, theta of T, theta of parts of speech embeddings and theta for language model embeddings. So which are adaptively learned to ensure that losses are minimized here. And these embeddings now represent the discriminant representation of the text instead of the plain mixed text embeddings. And these are finally used for the context understanding of the textual data instead of directly doing it. So here we have two contributions to make here. One is we are defining adaptively rotated refined embeddings. Then secondly, we will be using these embeddings to feed into the vision transformer as a part of multi-head attention. So now this will be combinedly called as rotated multi-head adaptive attention. So in this direction, let's have a look at how the rotated refined embeddings are generated. So you have a caption given as an attractive smiling young gardener is standing in a flower center. So we have colored different parts of speeches with, uh, we have colored the words with different, you know, colors for to represent different parts of speeches that ensures that part of speech is going to take care of individual sections and develop the embeddings as word to word. Then you are going to calc uh, find out their TF, IDF embeddings. And here are the pre-trained language model embeddings that you get. So when you concatenate them, you get mixed embeddings as M1, M2, M3. Then finally, you put them on the rotation scale where you rotate them adaptively. Now, the, these thetas are not the fixed values, but we ha have learned it during the training process to ensure the minimized learning. And then finally, you have the rotated embeddings generated, which are adaptively rotated. And this representation we call as refined embeddings that we will, we will be utilizing here to pass to my transformer encoder, or you call it as rotated multi-head attention block in the form of key and query, where the value will be utilized in the form of image features or image patches. So if we see this encoder is going to ensure that the whatever is the contextual uh, textual context the uh, tweets hold will be utilized to make an overlap 
with the content that image carries, which is fed to the transformer with uh, by after you know dividing it into patches, then pro giving it assert, uh, the standard positional encodings, and then finally converting into the hidden linear layer embeddings. So this is afterwards within a multi-head attention, it is just the similar, the only dis, dis, difference we are finding here is from the standard multi-head attention encoder is the key and Q values are not the same visual data, but it is the textual data that will be given due attention. And here in this blog, the individual embeddings are picked up, normalized, they are fully forwarded and normalized. Now in this encoder, we have used n number of blocks. So we experimented with it and we identified when we are expanding the number of units of encoder to identify, you know, what is a sufficient number of encoders we require because we have a big question of how we can make our pre-trained model uh, or, or our defined model more computationally efficient. So we don't want to bag it with multiple number of encoders. So we started with one, two, and three. And after three encoding blocks together, we identified that uh, the system started entering into the overfitting or a saturation state. For that concern, we had uh, the multi uh, uh, we restricted the number of encoders, the value of n to be three here. And then after you have MLP head place to get the final classification to be made. Now coming to the experimental result part, we have uh, three data sets that we have utilized, which is binary getting image data set, Twitter data set and MBSA single data set. And these are certain parameters we have ensured uh, to uh, get optimized results where we are using uh, the Collapro platform with NVIDIA P100 GPU with 24 GB RAM, Adam optimizer with learning rate of 10 raised to 10 times e raised to power minus 3, 32 batch, batch size, 80 epochs, and we also had early stopping with the patient's value of 3 so that this it won't go into the saturation state and require more computation without making any prominent changes in the performance. So we stopped it there itself and we are using the simplest binary cross entropy loss and it worked perfectly fine there. So these are the results we have observed when we evolved uh, during the process of designing the architecture. So we uh, when we started with a very fundamental vision transformer, having the, uh, the inbuilt multi-head attention, the accuracy is, reported as 84.52, to 80.25, and 63.22. Hi, sorry. Whereas sorry, when... Uh How many yeah. slides more do you have? Uh, just two, three more. All right, so maybe we take like one minute to wrap it up because I think uh, we are yeah. starting short in time. Yeah, great. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So when we, uh, when we replaced this vision transformer with your vision, plus BERT, will BERT, which is you taking care of your visual as well as the textual data, the results were a little better. That confirms that textual visual interaction makes it improved understanding about the sentiment analysis. Then we went for the blip. Then we had uh, the improved version as visual plus MTE, the mixed text uh, embeddings we generated, and we fused it with the vision transformer. So that has given us enhanced results, whereas the rotated embeddings provide you even much better results. So this is the distinction we are making, uh, distinct results we are observing when we introduce rotated embeddings to our vision transformer. So these are just the comparison results we are observing. So I have a point to make here is that we get almost equivalent results with deep DMVAN work. The, key reason behind is that we 
the work has dedicatedly utilized the streams for visual and the textual data to generate the features and then they are using the I, uh, uh, sorry I, just to interrupt again uh maybe can we just move on to the last slide then just like uh, give a good conclusion right then uh people who are interested in the work i mean this is fantastic work we can probably look at the work okay, no problem, more, more no details problem. yeah yeah. Can you just move? yeah. So these are some uh, poor results uh, we observed uh, for certain cases where there's always a conflict between the text and the images. And this is the just concluding slide that where we meant, uh, where we can observe that we have presented uh, a textual context guided vision transformer with rotated multi headed tensions. Now this structure is used to uh, for general purposes. Uh, to learn multi-model interactions in an efficient way with limited computational demands. Here, the rotated multi-head attention block projects the key query and value vectors in a distinct embedding space, which provides you the refined attention map that resulted in the outperforming results. And then we have, uh, if, you, uh, if you talk about the future prospects, so it holds a potential real-life applications beyond sentiment analysis like visual question answering, visual grounding multi-model document understanding. So this is uh, how I conclude with my work. Thank you for patient listening.